Yahweh, Yahweh. Our hope is Yahweh, Yahweh. We look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Forever Yahweh, Yahweh, we look to Yahweh, we look to Yahweh, Yahweh, Yahweh. Our hope is Yahweh, Yahweh, we look to Yahweh. to be glorified you are worthy almighty god you are worthy to be glorified you are worthy lord to be glorified Please be seated. Just for a few minutes and we'll be upstanding. Shabalaka tapa rato kasiyada. Jebeke te kosada balado siya na malata. Shabrandos kalabriyatash. Jege te barakosiya da balada ba. Second Chronicles seven verse fourteen. If my people the first three words they are my people so we are not talking of those who are not my people but if my people more so they are called by my name he said they shall humble themselves he didn't say they shall say i am sorry repentance is not brokenness brokenness is deeper than repentance he says and shall seek my face and turn from their wicked ways then will i hear from heaven i will forgive their sins and i will not heal them i will heal their land their territory not just heal them but their territory the absence of a broken and contrite spirit is for many of us the mystery behind not only the tragedies of our lives the continued patterns and the reign of darkness over families over territories over individuals that you are a christian is not enough brokenness is a state that god cannot deny what is brokenness brokenness is a state of complete surrender number one number two brokenness is a recognition of your imperfections and your inadequacies outside of the mercy and the help of god this is called brokenness a recognition of your inadequacies and your imperfections outside of the mercy and the help of god brokenness is a spiritual strategy that God designed to kill pride in the life of men. Brokenness is a system in the kingdom. It's a strategy invented by the wisdom of God to kill pride in men. Let me tell you this. Pride is behind the many sufferings of people. Not sin. Pride. Pride. Nobody really suffers for being a sinner. We suffer because of our pride our parents suffer because of pride it's not their shortcomings it is the refusal to acknowledge that every man is inadequate without god are we together is god speaking to us the power of genuine brokenness
It's a strategy that kills pride. It's a strategy that kills a sense of self-sufficiency. One of the greatest unbecoming of believers. That sense of self-sufficiency. I can do without God. I can do without him. I can live without him. Lord, when I have a challenge in my life, I will call your attention to help me. Are we together now? Yes. It doesn't mean that God is not involved, but you keep him until you feel it is, with, it is beyond your power. Then you say, Lord, can you quickly come and just help me and then go back? A broken and a contrite heart is a heart that is perpetually living in the revelation that outside of God, I am inadequate. Are we together? Psalm 34 verse 18. Please give it to us. Psalm 34 verse 18. Psalm 34 and verse 18. Please read it. It's projected. One to read. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart. He said, and save it such. There are certain people that qualify for his salvation. The Bible says people who are of a contrite heart. That's the reason why you can see some persons will come to church. Are we together? They, come, they don't have faith. Are we together? They are not even walking in holiness and righteousness as we know. But they come with a genuine sense of brokenness. And the whole service becomes about them. Something about the sincerity of their heart attracted God. Are we together? Notice the kinds of people that attracted Jesus in his ministry. He, he was hardly attracted by the scribes and the Pharisees. He would see the sinners and go to them. They caught the woman with the issue uh, with, with, with adultery. She didn't argue and said, no, 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 no. And Jesus came and helped her. Remember when he met the woman who had six husbands. Five and the sixth one was not her husband. Look at how Jesus took time to reach out to these people. Let me tell you, there is one attribute I know a man can possess that will attract God in a helpless way. It's a broken and a contrite heart. Are we together? Yes. That a man can cry unto God from a state of brokenness and say, Lord, if you do not help me, my family will not rise. We have broken all the laws of financial prosperity. We have broken, I'm not a tighter. We are not tighters. We are not givers. Lord, if you don't help us, we are finished. And you will watch the Lord treat them like he treats the lilies of the valley that do not sow, neither do they reap. Yet, because they are his creation, he will get up and reach out to them in mercy. Every time people were broken and contrite, God responded to them. In the book of Jonah, there was a strange prophet that God gave an instruction to go to Nineveh and warn them. You know why Jonah refused? He knew God. He knew they would repent. He was praying that their, their hardened heartedness would remain so God would punish them for him. And he ran away and God drew him back. He said, go back. And the Bible says when Jonah announced that the people broke themselves in fasting and ashes, even their animals fasted. These were not people who were believers. They were not even of the covenant. But they became broken. Every time people were broken, God no longer asked them where they came from. A broken and a contrite heart. The opposite of pride. He said a broken and a contrite heart he will not despise. Let me tell you this. When you walk with God, we teach these principles. Your results at a level in the spirit will no longer be based on the accuracy of your applying this principle but that you have come to a place where you have become the friend of god it is important to teach these principles but i submit to you a time will come in your work with god it's no longer about what you are doing you have won his heart in a way and manner that he has become vulnerable to you 
you will see things you did not pray for you will enter dimensions you did not fast for because you have maintained a state of genuine brokenness the prodigal son left packed his wealth and went to live a riotous life is that true the bible says one day he came to himself that's what must happen to many people in this day one of this fast he came to himself and said come how many hired servants does my father have while i sit down here and die with the pigs what is there to be ashamed of i will arise and i will go to my father and i will say father i have sinned against heaven and against you and i am not worthy you gave me resources i squandered it in a riotous way the bible says while he was afar off as soon as the father saw him he ran to him notice the father never asked him so where were you all the while a broken and a contrite heart is a magnet for the help and the mercy of god a broken and a contrite heart this is a principle that not only works for god it works for men are we together as wicked as we are as men when you find a man that is broken towards you no matter how hard you are you become as soft as a tissue paper the reason why many of us have lost favor we have lost opportunities we are humans and it is true that at some point you made decisions that was not wise or whatever it is our parents you fought with your boss they fired you something happened but we we thought we were repentant but we were not broken you see brokenness has a spirit you can know a man can come and say sorry hey, jimmy please i want to work for you again sorry and you know that this is just this is just apology this is pride on rampage brokenness has a character it's an unashamed acknowledgement of your humanity and how much it can shred you into pieces except God helps you. There are people who have gotten their jobs back not because they qualified, they came with brokenness. There are relationships that have been restored because the individuals could be broken enough. Are we together? There are business connections that have come back because of brokenness. Listen to what I'm teaching you tonight. It's a very deep mystery. David was a man who understood brokenness thoroughly. 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 Isaiah 57 verse 15. Quickly. Let's look at it. Isaiah 57 verse 15. For thus saith the high and lofty one that inhabited eternity, listen, whose name is holy. It says, I dwell in the high and holy place with him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit. To do what? To revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. There are people who are qualified for revival, like a dry and thirsty land. As a man of God, you have come to your wit's end. As a businessman, you have come to your wit's end. And you come to the Lord and say, Lord, I am broken. I acknowledge that if you do not help me, I cannot do anything. And God shows up for you. Someone can be holding his stick of cigarette under a bridge and just sit down and say, God, I don't know if you are there, but you need to help me. It's not like I like my life. I'm sitting this way. Please arise for me. Brothers and sisters, no prayer and fasting, no fill with the Holy Ghost for his spiritual eyes to be opened. There an angel is sent from heaven and it comes to that person there. His brokenness is a magnet. It drew the hand of God. I have seen God visit families that broke every spiritual law I know. Learn the laws of the spirit. Your humanity will necessitate them. Learn them. One of it is brokenness. Are we together? Yes. David was a man who understood God. God, don't give me to my enemies. Punish me by yourself. I choose your own way. And God said, this man, this man. 
how many young people have lost the favor of their loved ones because they do not have a heart of brokenness you used to live a wayward life by saying now am i not get am i not getting well behaved is my father not seeing there's no brokenness genuine brokenness i have seen people who are genuinely broken i have seen i have advocated for people who have offended their destiny helpers and i saw the level and the extent of their brokenness i felt guilty leaving them that way i went out of my way to broker reconciliation this is me a man take over jehovah I have come to the end of myself. Take over, Jehovah. I have touched the end of myself. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. I have come to the end of myself. Hallelujah. So take over, Jehovah, I have come to the end of myself, Jehovah, Jehovah, I have touched the end of myself, hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm sharing with you this is a very powerful revelation these are the kinds of people that all things work for their good they know what to do to God to change equations you will look at them it is true their family should be caused their father was a herbalist it's true he slew one of the sons it is true that an ordinance is speaking against them and he goes before God he says Lord I, I don't come in my own righteousness. I come before you. Oh God, I never lied that I was a herbalist. I never lied that I collect the charm. It was out of pressure I came before you. Who else will I run to? And God says, who is calling me? Who is call which family is calling me? And while repentance is going on, one devil is there concocting a charm. That man cannot pray in tongues. That man does not even know which scripture should be. He cried and God showed up and said, because of what you have done, I enter a covenant with your children's children that all of them will be the head. And you find out that three generations afterwards, all leaders, not because they fasted, their brokenness was a covenant. Are we together? show me a man that understands brokenness and i show you a man whose end you will never see you will never see i am convinced now and and I, I don't say this in a state of sarcasm i say this sincerely i am convinced that when people fall to a point that their chapter closes the a level of pride was responsible for that are we together hmm. peter saw jesus christ and because of the pressure he ran away and betrayed him it was not a lie when jesus came to him in john 21 he said little children have you any catch he said cast your net to the right side when they caught fish peter realized it was jesus the same jesus he had betrayed three days ago the bible says he ran away he said go away from me i am a sinner this is not the issue of condemnation it's a recognition jesus i did this to you and you still come to me i disappointed you i told everyone i did not know you i took advantage of your benevolence but i come to you and Jesus said, Simon, this attitude has earned you something. Feed my sheep. Feed my lamb. You qualify to be the leader. This is the kind of attitude that is leader worthy. An attitude that is unashamed before me. 
there are many proud people moving up and down i don't drink i don't smoke i don't look for women i don't look for men and our pride keeps us there every time we see people rolling before god and crying their hearts we sit down there with a sense of self-perfection full of our pride full of our jealousy full of our lust just because it has not yet manifested does not mean it's not there and when there is an opportunity to cry before god we sit down saying ah, uh -uh you mean that lady is also praying wow thank god oh koinonia is helping some people a broken and a contrite heart a heart that is unashamed before god a heart that can roll from end to end and say lord you are the helper you are the coverer you are the defender of my life the psalmist knew this he said i'm aware that many are they that trouble me many are they that look they pray for my downfall if you do not understand brokenness you will fall like a chicken it will surprise you your rising has a side effect to many people and they hope and pray daily that something happens in your life and if you understand brokenness you have held god in a way and manner that he will never leave you this i know about god a broken and a contrite believers are very proud people we exaggerate the teachings of faith we exaggerate the teachings of righteousness and it makes us proud people and we cannot tremble at his word and allow his spirit to walk on us that's why there is no power that's why there is no grace that's why there is no favor that's why there are no results a sense of self-sufficiency take over take over I have come to the end of myself. Take over, take over. I have come to the end of myself. Hallelujah. 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 I have come to the end of myself. Brokenness is a mystery that attracts the mercy and the help of God to a man's life. A mystery that attracts the help and the mercy of God. When God is ready to show you mercy, do you know God can help men? How many of you believe that? Do you know God can help men? Ha! There are very few people that have seen the help of God. This is not men favoring you. This is God deciding that I want to help you. I have helped people in my life by the grace of God and I have seen how easy their lives became because I could reach out to them God can turn to a man and say me Alpha Omega I have decided to come to your family to help you it will surprise you what will happen most of us do not know what the help of God can do he said I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help not my neighbor's own i don't know how he gets his own but my help you see us like this the name of this ministry is ebenezer a ministry that has been helped by god helped spiritually helped with grace some of these mysteries are not just a product of personal research some of them are a sheer help of god that god comes to you by himself and says i want to help you God can help men. When God helps you, something will change about your life. There are many families that don't help, have the help of God because our loved ones are there in their pride and arrogance. I think we should go and see a man of God. I know God too. And God says, you see? You see it now? A broken and a contrite heart. Let's go and cry to God. Ah, didn't I tell my wife sorry? Didn't I tell my husband sorry? There's no brokenness. Genuineness. Some of us seated here, this is the one limitation that makes Satan to buffet our lives and yet God seems to stand helpless. Everybody say genuine brokenness. Genuine brokenness. That a man can come to a point where he goes to God. I remember a woman who shared her, her testimony, very touching testimony. 
she was staying in a house um, a, a, a rented apartment very wealthy man you know somewhere in abuja and true story she could not pay you know there was no way it's not the issue of give me time there's nowhere money is going to come from anywhere and the woman was broken because she still had the fees of her children this woman sent me a text by herself she said when she, it was very obvious that the boss was the the owner was going to drive her that the woman said she just knelt down before him and said you have children like this one and she was crying she said it's not my fault that my husband died i didn't kill him it's not my fault that I didn't have the opportunity to be educated. I'm not lazy. It's just condition that has kept me like this. If you drive me, where do I go to? This woman started crying and according to what she told me that the man just kept quiet and looked at her and was touched. He said, I have children and I have conscience. I will never do this. He said, continue to stay here. It's not your own, but just continue to say, forget about rent. Because of this thing you have done, I've given you this. The help you know many of us want to seek help at our own terms pride and help don't go together are you hearing what i'm saying please emeka i hear you're a doctor can you treat me you are the one who is sick oh god are you not seeing what is this family is doing we need five million to solve our problems i come by the blood of the lamb as, as if you, you you ask him to die and in the name of jesus christ pride that's what the bible calls it i watch people all around from pastors to leaders and in all honesty i see that price oozing out desperate for help but not broken enough to receive it there are people who are desperate for help but the brokenness that qualifies them to receive their knees will not go to the ground i don't mean physically their knees will not go to they want to be helped but they want to be helped at their own terms sorry do you have 100 naira? can you help me it's not by force if you don't have that's all right that's a proud man he's hungry he's in need and he's ashamed it's not my culture to beg i'm, I'm just it's, i just felt like and it's not usually what i do i just hope that you can help me pride those kinds of people never get the attention of god thou son of david thou son of david please thou you are the son of david others call you jesus but i i know what they've been saying about you have mercy i don't know what what it takes to stand up from here and i'm not sure i even have it look at the father of that guy that was convulsing he said help my own belief i don't understand this your faith thing i've done all i know to be faith please if i'm not getting it right if you leave me here to learn faith this child can die before i finish learning it help my own belief and god turned who is this notice how god was helplessly drawn to people who were broken is god speaking to us lord i need your grace and i need your anointing i'm not i'm not coming to act as if we are colleagues Lord, I'm standing. If you give me anointing, fine. Mm -mm -mm. I'm not ashamed. I need thee. Oh, I need thee. Every hour, I need thee. Come bless me now, my Savior. I come to thee. I need thee. Oh, I need thee. Every hour I need thee Come bless me now my Savior I come Listen When you truly need help Don't act like you can do without it Are you hearing what I'm saying? Brokenness is a force It can draw help to you there are many destiny helpers around us but our pride is what stops us from receiving help it doesn't take god anything to change a man's life overnight is this attitude of pride oh promise i hear that um you are an anointed man can you just agree with me i have issues in my life uh, but if you are not if you are free that's all right you expect that anointing to work 
I'm not talking of human worship. It's the same way we approach God. We approach God with our pride and our sense of being. This is not condemnation. This is a recognition. If you hear the way I pray for koinonia, it will scare you. You will think I killed a human being. Lord, it is by your mercy that you draw people. This afternoon, I just laid down on my bed flat and I said, Lord, it is by your mercy you change people. It is your voice that is able to change people. You are the only one who will draw people. I don't take for granted what you are doing. I will never act like I don't need you. And here he comes again, a broken and a contrite heart. What prophecy did you cancel through pride? What prophecy stopped working in your life? Because there was no genuine brokenness. This kingdom thrives on mysteries. I'm unveiling one of them for you. So that you will see. Ezekiel 36 verse 26. You want a new heart? You want to rise in the spirit? It takes brokenness. Ezekiel chapter 36 and verse 26. We are, we are going to pray shortly. Very quickly. It says, a new heart also I will give you. And a new spirit will I put within you. I will take away the stony heart. This is, this is the heart of many of us here. The stony and stubborn heart. He says, and I will give you a heart of flesh. That's the Bible. Let me show you one more scripture. Very powerful scripture I found. Jeremiah 24 verse 7. Jeremiah 24 verse 7. Very solid scripture. Listen. He says, and I will give them an heart to know me that I am the Lord. I will give you a heart that will make you know me. He says, and they shall be my people and I will be their God. Why? For they shall return to me with their whole heart. They shall return to me with their whole heart. A broken and a contrite heart towards God and towards men. There are nations that would never go for war if their leaders can just admit we were careless we compromised on the deal I'm sorry but millions go hungry and in war because of the pride of one person over my dead body you hear them say many of the yokes that are on our families came because of the pride of one person one person one person one arrogant person over my dead body and the Havali said to me say yes and we grew up in all kinds of yokes of darkness how many people offended a very old woman pushed her down and she said my daughter what did I do leave me alone is it that you don't have eyes to see and the woman looks you say you did this to me your children will do it to you and the foolish girl moves around thinking that it's all about catwalking and many years later her innocent daughters come beautiful wonderful people when a man comes as soon as he says I love you what will happen to him he will leave you by himself that's why God put this Gen if my people who are called by my name they are called by my name but the devil is still beating them left right and center he never said I don't have the power to save are we together he said but they shall humble themselves and then pray and then seek my face and turn from their wicked ways under that condition I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and heal their lands go and watch the documentary about Fiji Island the revival in Fiji Island that's what happened many years ago missionaries came to Fiji Island and then the people slaughtered the missionaries and killed them and the missionaries when they slaughtered them everything died in that land the fishes disappeared mysteriously from the sea it's a documentary you can go and watch everything went down they will plant crops locusts will come from nowhere and devour it 
and then one time a group of Christians who had been exposed said look this thing is not just the issue of we are Christians there has to be a way of making peace are we together in the New Testament restitution is not necessarily just about going back to go and say oh I stole five naira when I was five years but restitution is a state in the heart a genuine state this our pride in the body of Christ is why we don't see the power of God we just jump at anything just because of a little theological study we did here and there and do you know the people in the land came together intercessors began to pray a few weeks turned to months and one time in the midst of that prayer the spirit of prophecy came and he said look you people have to pray this land has taken the blood of those who were bearers of good news and they sat down they prayed and they cried before God they said Lord you have to help us and fortunately for them they were able to get in touch with the grandchildren of the ministers they slaughtered and the Christian missionary said it's true we have repented but since these people are there can't we reach out to them and they wrote a letter to them and the young people say we are not coming you people slaughtered our grandparents we had the story you didn't even allow us to see their body they removed their head and danced around with them in shrines and eventually the Christian organizations called the people and they came and do you know they had it was like a ceremony they made peace they hugged them and the little children say no 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 our parents have died but their blood flows to us and you are repentant we bless you the people who did this thing have long died you shouldn't be the victims of this we bless you it was not up to one week they started seeing fishes mysteriously in the sea the water the vegetation go and read it Fiji Island the the like the president of Fiji Island officially dedicated the place to God mysteries that people do not know and we cheat ourselves here and there a broken heart show me somebody who has offended God to whatever and can run to God and say Lord I come to you show me a man who has offended a human being and can run to the person genuinely remember Jesus taught about this in the parable of the servants unjust servants one of them went and cried master forgive me and all of that and all of that and they forgave him and then he did not go to make peace with the other one and then they now dealt with him that story was a message that you can run to him and you can cry and he will hear you if my people if koinonia a ministry called by my name shall humble themselves most of us every time we hear this thing we just think it's just for sinners it's for bad people may God knows I've tried that thing is pride is pride when it's time to be broken before God you are broken genuinely Lord it is by your mercy it is by your grace I need your help in my life men are getting more wicked I need your help I counseled a dear woman I'm sure she may be here and when I counseled her I saw the kind of trouble she you know as I counsel people my heart reaches to them I've been doing this for years there are cases when you hear you know that only God no matter how well meaning you are you can't help that situation the only and and the way they come to you man of God help me and you too you know that you can't help. it takes it takes only one who sits on God's throne to be able to help do you believe God can help you my life is a testimony of a man that God has helped God can help men it's a language we don't know most of our loved ones don't know it they believe men can help but they don't believe God can help the key is brokenness some of those who have received the mercy of God most are some of the most disobedient people that's what pains some of us because you are roommates with them 
and you see the way God keeps going out the moment they are broke oh Lord an alert comes and you are there you come back from three days dry say father I'm still here say you, you will continue being there and you watch you there's no brokenness in your heart somebody comes and says Lord help me you know my situation there are people who God changed their exam scores because of brokenness they went to God and said Lord please help me I take responsibility I didn't read it is obvious that if this result comes out I have two years and they rolled before God and cried I'm not talking of the mystery of a dance this is not dancing it's not every time you dance there are times you lie down and cry and God comes to them and all of a sudden the course comes out and you see a something they didn't finish answering question one out of five questions who taught us that God has stopped helping men he said Uzziah prospered because he was marvelously helped marvelously God can help a man of God and in one month your life and ministry will change God can help a family some of these things we are struggling with it takes God to help us you attract his help one of the things that I believe believers and I say this from the strength of counseling there are two spirits that believers must cry that God should help I know we are humans and I don't mean to condemn you masturbation and pornography two devils of darkness that the devil uses to tear people into pieces it starts from their dreams when something good is about to happen a breakthrough is about to happen there the spirit comes again and you find out that the favor goes then the urge leaves too I'm yours I'm yours I'm yours forever I'm yours I'm yours I'm yours Lord I'm yours I'm yours I'm yours forever I'm yours I'm yours I'm yours sing one more time Lord I'm yours I'm yours There are women who the secret to the baby you are looking for is brokenness i've met every man of god they prayed for me I've, uh, uh, brokenness carry your medical report you have five brought here you have five brought here you put it on the ground and let your tears do the praying oh god will you not help me oh god my father served you till he died he died as a missionary for the sake of your mercy remember mercy and you are crying and you fall asleep and here comes an angel sent from heaven and he comes to you just touches your stomach and you get up and go to the hospital doctor check me again and they say it's a joke where did you go to the helper the helper showed up in your house koinonia our families need help if we don't humble ourselves recession will punish us to our knees we need help there are families that need to come together and just get down on their knees from the greatest to the least to say lord i am the priest in this home but i'm officially lifting this family we need your help we are broken we are broken see the bible says even a thief when he's caught if the thief tells you I only stole because I was hungry he says pity him Bible it, this is the Holy God speaking that's why God will look at a prostitute somewhere and we say God condemn her and God looks in the midst of her prostitution what he's seeing is Lord I need help I've been doing this thing for 10 years but I need help and God suddenly sends a very powerful man of God he said that's your wife and you are there saying God this is cheating I've been in church God said well 
I promote who I can promote and demote any proud person I can demote. This is the reason why we are angry at some people's results because it looks like it's not fair. God should not help them with the way their lives are. But God, when your heart is right before God, God will surprise you. I am a keeper of principles, but I can tell you this. I have been committed to stand up and help people no matter how stupid they are because of something about their brokenness. When you see me pray for koinonia and pray for my own life, it, it will irritate you if you are praying with me. I don't cry before men, but don't be deceived. I cry before God with my life. I lie down before him and I say, Lord, help me. Help me. Are you getting blessed? We are going to pray. This is what we must engage tonight. Many of us need to cry on behalf of our proud family members. Ten ladies, no marriage. Go to the house of God. God forbid all that place in that church that they gossip about people. God wants to. I won't come there. I'm, I'm too. No, no, no. I won't do that. You can stand on their behalf and say, Lord, if you depend on my family's faithfulness, you will never bless us. Lord, I'm advocating. Lord, my father is a proud man, but I cry for the sake of Jesus, for the sake of what the Lord has done on the cross. Please step in for my family. Sickness is eating everyone. Lord, we have broken every rule, every law. I now know it is true that my father has 10 girlfriends somewhere. But Lord, if you use him to punish us, Moses knew what to do for Israel. God was angry. He said, these guys are in idolatry. I will curse them. Moses said, God, calm down. Abba, are you not merciful and compassionate? Do you want them to say you brought these people out and could not take them to the promised land? And God repented. Whatever you answer me, I surrender. This is the condition to see the mercy and the grace of God. Whatever you ask me, whatever you ask of me, I surrender. I surrender. That's my commitment. That nothing becomes too much to release whatever. to you. Whatever you ask of me, I surrender. I surrender. Just prophesy it as a song. We are going to pray shortly. Whatever you ask of me, whatever you ask of me, I surrender. I surrender. Whatever you ask of me, whatever you ask of me, I surrender. One more time. Whatever you ask of me, Lord. Whatever you ask of me, I surrender. Hmm. Whatever you ask of me, I'm yours. I'm yours. I'm yours forever. It's yours. It's yours. It's yours. Lord, it's yours. It's yours. It's yours forever. It's yours. It's yours. It's yours. Hallelujah. Before you start claiming right, Tonight is a night of thorough brokenness before God. I'm going to give you the next five to ten minutes alone before we start praying corporately. Whether it's on your chair, just I'm going to leave you alone with God. Everybody, find a way alone with God. Break your pride, whether you are inside or outside. This is 
you are alone with God and say Lord mercy 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 for my family mercy for my finances for my spiritual life Lord do not judge my family according to their iniquities for they are many Lord do not judge my sisters according to their wrongs do not judge my brothers Lord if you do not show my mother mercy there is no salvation if you do not show my father mercy Lord save my territory they are an idol worshipping territory they still worship idols have mercy I come to you with a broken heart Lord there are charms in my house right now I come to you with a broken heart pray pray Forever, I'm yours. I'm yours. I'm yours. Lord, I'm yours. I'm yours. Then I'm yours. Then I'm yours. Forever, I'm yours. I'm yours. I'm yours. Lord, if you depend on my attitude, I will never get married. Lord, if you depend on my prayer life then I will never see your hand Lord if you depend on my faith level I will never break through in the spirit but tonight I cry I come to you with genuine brokenness forever 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 Whatever you ask of me, I surrender. Lord, if you leave me to my results, I will never graduate. Lord, if you leave me to my jam score, I may never get admission. Where is the helper of my destiny? Arise for me. I cry before you. Oh God of Jeshurun. Arise and take away the shame of my family. There are times in this kingdom I admit to you where it is not the quality of your keeping the mysteries of the kingdom but your ability to invoke the help of God through brokenness. There are businesses that the people don't know anything about finance. They cried before God and God arose and said I choose to wipe your tears. There are families who based on the way they train their children all the children should be arm robbers and prostitutes but not one of them is a spoiled child because somewhere along the line the parents had to hold their hands together and say lord help us help us this cry can give you a job i tell you this cry can give you a husband based on the way you are no good man should come to you it's not a lie but the mercy the mercy of God Not 
surrender. Just a few more minutes of genuine brokenness. Whatever you ask me, say. Whatever you ask of me, I surrender. If you are not seriously praying, you are a non-believer. If you are not praying in this atmosphere, genuinely, then I'm telling you something is wrong with your passion for God. I surrender. Lord, let the desires of my enemies not come upon me. Whatever you ask of me, I surrender. There are many who lie in wait, waiting for your family to fail, to prove, but that God by his mercy can fit you and help you. I surrender. Oh God Oh God. As we call on your name Oh God For out your mercy As we pray for his help oh, oh, oh God as we call on your name oh, oh God pour out your mercy Lord as we for you. says his mercies are new every morning just one more minute and we'll pray corporately and we're done
the Lord held the hands of Cyrus an unbeliever and prospered him because of the pride of God's own people he gave them over to their enemies it is not the witchcraft in your family that is killing you it is the lack of brokenness that is authorizing the spells to keep working there is a way your repentance can be so genuine the Lord will arise for you by his mercy my deliverer is coming my deliverer is standing by my deliverer is coming my deliverer is standing by your deliverer is coming your deliverer is standing by Prophesy to yourself two more times. My deliverer is coming. My deliverer is standing by. One more time. Sing. My deliverer is coming. My deliverer is standing by. Now, in the next 10 minutes, I want you to arise like one who has touched the heart of God. We are going to engage in some. 15 minutes of intense warfare we are going to pound the gates of hell with faith we are going to pray and say that accuser of my family I have, bro I have been broken before God on behalf of my family he will not lift a railing accusation against my father against my mother I come with the spirit of faith lift your voice and begin to blast in tongues the Bible says, even the lawful captive, even the lawful captive, even the lawful captive, who are down mountain? Who are down mountain? Who are down mountain? Shakata ta 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 ta, shakata pa ka ta ta ta, reke te ke te ke te ke te, e reke to shoto pe ke te, mata pa ka to shoto pe ke te. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare, ma pa to so se ke te riakata. Come on, pray. Silence the accuser. Silence the altars. Silence the voices. Hallelujah. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Please shout it in the name of Jesus. I declare that every legal access for accusation for oppression over my life over my family by the mystery of brokenness i command it broken now lift your voice and pray i silence the accuser over my family i silence the accuser over koinonia the altar that accuses the covenants that accuses. 
Hallelujah. Pair yourselves into two. Say after me in the name of Jesus. I declare that everything associated with my lineage, my family line that the devil is using against me by the blood, I silence you. Hold the hands of your neighbor and pray. pray. I silence you. I silence you. Ordinances. Handwriting. Ordinances. Handwriting. By the fire of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Shout it, say in the name of Jesus. Oh God, you are my helper. Say it again. Oh God, you are my helper. I have no other. I call unto you. Show up in my life. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Show up. Show up, oh God. By your mercy. Show up for me. Show up for me. Show up for my finances. Show up for my spiritual life. You are my helper. You are my helper. You are my helper. Me punto potupa, ila patopa, arito patene, ila tab. Yeah. Ito poto pete, rekete pete, soto pete, poto porusa, soto siakata, rekete 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One or two last prayer points. And we finish. The Lord has declared that it's a year of signs and wonders. I told you a sign and a wonder is a miracle with a message on it. You are going to say, Lord, turn me. Pray. Say in the name of Jesus. Father, I offer my life. Turn it. Into a sign and a wonder. Lift your voice and pray. Turn my life. Turn my life into a miracle with a message on it. Turn it into a miracle with a message on it. Turn it into a miracle with a message on it. Turn my life to a fearful sign of wonder. Turn my life to a sign of wonder. go pata, pati go poto, epre te peke, poto poro tush, peru sabane, paru sabane, agaru pata, epre te kene, edu sarato, agapute, prato po, galata, ilatea. Hallelujah. The last prayer, and then we'll share the grace. Hallelujah. You notice we didn't take testimonies today, we'll do it tomorrow. So when you come, I expect lots of testimonies. We'll do it tomorrow. But we're just starting today. We'll just take this prayer point and then we're done. Tomorrow we can welcome new people and all of that. Hallelujah. Say in the name of Jesus. Everything I have lost in the years past, I decree and declare by the power of brokenness, return back to my life. Open your mouth and pray. Yeah. Everything. 
the roof shall work again. Everything that was lost shall be returned. I call back friends. I call back opportunities. I call back graces. I call back mantles. I call back fire. Every catane, every tepedo, poro patane, abi te guta, elu shaba, every te, ele bata. Ola bata yaba. Hey, 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 Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, please listen. We're still standing. I want you to maximize these times of prayer. Don't only pray when we come together. Are we together? The fire that is burning in this place will be burning for seven days. You can use the time. The sun is hot, but you can look for somewhere. Sit down and pray. I expect this revelation I've shared now. It should last you till evening tomorrow. So you go back and pray. It. Wake up in the night and pray it and curse that devil. When you hear the accuser declare brokenness, call your parents and tell them help is on the way. Help is on the way. I know you are traditionalist, but help is on the way. Call them. Don't say I'm afraid it will not happen. We are talking about God here. Call them. The help is on the way. I prayed for you, and God is coming. Hallelujah. Please be here on time. And when you come, don't come alone. This is not, you can see that there are people everywhere. But you have prayed tonight, and you know there are some people who should be praying this prayer. Drag them and plead with them. That this is not a koinonia thing this is God visiting a land bring them this magical manifestation that people want will not work that way you come and engage mysteries and God will bless you we are fasting please fast these children are not too small to join us if they do 6 to 10 it's alright if they do 6 to 12 it's okay are we together now take out time and pray and fast by Monday, I will give us the keys to the other days and what we are going to be doing. But take our time to pray. Yesterday's message has been uploaded. Get it and listen to it. You can wake up in the night, just play this song, find a song. Don't snore your way till morning. Even if it's 15 minutes in the night, maximize the night time. Get up and sit on the ground. And just lie down. And begin to reminisce on his faithfulness. And begin to prophesy. You have to engage this thing to work. Lift your hands. In the name of Jesus Christ, I bless you. This is day one already. It won't reach day seven before you see the outstretched arm of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Some of you already from tonight, this was your key for this prayer. That you have gotten this key, you will command signs and wonders again and again in the name of Jesus. I pray for everyone who is sick here in the name of Jesus be healed right now I stretch my hands as an extension of the hands of Jesus and I rebuke every infirmity in your body be made whole right now in the name of Jesus Christ let's share the grace may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore Amen. God bless you. See you tomorrow. Inside, outside, those following online, Lord, we bless you. You are worthy of our praise. You are worthy of our worship. We give you all the praise. We give you all the praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just one more prayer point and then we'll sit down I'd like you to pray and say Lord I must be a partaker of prophecy this year 
not just a listener a partaker lift your voice there is already a prophetic word i must be a partaker are you praying inside outside pray from the depth of your heart lord i'm determined to be a partaker says this charge i give unto you timothy that you war a good warfare with the prophecy Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Um, I want to bless the Lord. It's good to see every one of us again. Happy New Year. Um, it's a privilege to be here again serving the lord building our lives building our spirits and i just want you to walk around to two or three people just deeply appreciate them for the new year appreciate them for seeing them again and then you'll be back to your seats let's just do that quickly tell them it's good to see you i'm happy we're seated together again learning building receiving divine strategies glad we are partakers of the year of triumph together hallelujah thank you please be seated second corinthians chapter 2 from verse 14 hallelujah i especially want to welcome I'm aware there are so many people who have traveled particularly for this first meeting and um, I want to truly acknowledge you and say thank you in the course of the service we will acknowledge you thank you for coming your life will never be the same and for those following online it's a new season and God will do new things in your life in Jesus name it's our culture to always begin our meetings for the year please pay attention sharing the prophetic words and helping us to make the most of the prophecy as you know I hate religion um, not in the general sense of it but religion as man's attempt to walk in the flesh trying to fulfill God's agenda and so I personally don't do things religiously I do things out of understanding and this has been our conviction as a ministry praise the Lord so the idea of prophetic words sent to guide people please I need you to understand I will say it year after year it's not it's not a way of also trying to do what ministries around are doing um, that is not the idea at all I believe personally and this ministry is built upon that conviction that God dwells in the realm of eternity but he functions in time are we together now and that in God's system there is always something he is doing part time that defines his intention and also explains the responsibility of the believers to enjoy that dimension of what he wants to do and so this is the idea behind prophetic words we're a very visionary ministry and uh, I always take time when many people are enjoying the Christmas celebration I usually I'm spending time in his presence getting the prophetic word for the year um, it is a compass it guides the kinds of teachings we bring it guides the ministry activities and believe me it's one of the secrets behind the success of this ministry that we do not do things until they are commanded hallelujah and the lord declared as many of you have received for those of you who have not received it you should have heard it um Shade did a very great job on it drumming it again and again that is our year of triumph i like you to say it prophetically it is my year of triumph say it again it is my year of triumph so my my function this evening is to unveil the prophetic word help us understand 
um, what God is actually saying help us understand God's commitments to us as a ministry um, and then share with us our part it's called koinonia I told us that there is always a part God plays and there is always a part we have to play so um, that's what I'll be discussing second Corinthians chapter 2 verse 14 let's read it together please it's projected one to read now thanks be uh-huh stop how many times how often it says now thanks be to God which always always caused us to triumph in Christ and makes through that triumph manifest the savour of the knowledge by us in every place this is a very powerful scripture now thanks be unto God who causes us the word causes is is not is not um i'm looking for the best way to describe it so we understand i don't want to use the word assist that may look um very inferior but that is the context in which this was written the word causes is not necessarily make us do it the word causes is like a volunteer i ask you whether or not you need my assistance are we together and if you declare that you need my assistance then i help you are we together now it's a ministry of the holy spirit thanks be to god the holy ghost which causes us to triumph in christ and makes manifest the sever of his knowledge by us let me tell you what this means through the victory that we keep commanding he uses us to explain to the world what he has been trying to tell them about trusting him about believing in him so he says i've been trying to tell you god is good i've been told to tell you god is victorious but it looks like you need a pictorial representation you need a dramatization of that so i use a man and grant through that man perpetual victory so that through his results you will understand what i've been trying to say so god is saying this year i don't want to talk too much i want men to see i've been talking depend on me i've been talking i want you to prosper i have been talking i want to lift you but now many people are saying what is the difference between you and buddha and he says hey jimmy come i will use your life like a trophy to show men the benefit of serving him so the message will not be an explanation the message will be a demonstration something about your life will be an epistle are we together now now thanks be unto god which causes us always to triumph write this word down triumph let's look at it the word triumph is a very interesting word i'll give you three definitions number one triumph is the condition of being victorious the condition of being victorious the state where a man is living perpetually in the realm of victory is called triumph the condition of being victorious number two triumph means significant success or noteworthy achievement significant success or noteworthy achievement meaning that you do something that is striking not something silent striking significant success noteworthy achievement number three triumph is the celebration this is another dimension to definition now it's not just achieving things but the celebration or the public display of manifested success the celebration of it not just the achievement of it but the celebration of it 
is the joy and the celebration that is derived from a major achievement we call that triumph the context of this when when you study when you study bible history every time the nation of israel fought with another nation listen number one you did not win that war if the king were still alive you cannot say you've won the war if the king is still alive or not yet captured that's what i mean so the apex of your victory was that you caught the king and you either presented him alive and helpless or dead and utterly mocked and the greatest way of mocking the king was to remove his head hang it on a stake and march triumphantly are we together so women and children did not go for war only able-bodied men would go for war and aside from those who married and they were less than one year in their marriage they were instructed by god to stay and spend time with their wives so that in case they died later on they had seeds after them are you getting the idea now so the women and the children would usually wait there would be watchmen at the gates are we together when the nation of israel or any nation for that matter defeated their enemies they would drag the king or hang his head and then they would have chariots with the spoils of that nation the spoils meant that all the treasures that were hidden are we together now the trumpeters would begin to blow a particular kind of sound every time the watchmen had that sound they would echo that sound to israel victory is coming god's people have defeated the enemy so they will now the you know how they welcome a president the women and children would stand sometimes they would throw flowers as the army triumphantly marched with the head of the wicked king who made noise for many years are we together now so that procession is called triumph are we together now triumph so they march gallantly and the king leading them demonstrating the might and the honor the reason why they did it publicly was that news should get to neighboring nations as a warning that in case you are planning to fight give up on time are we together so the bible says the testimony of jesus is the spirit of prophecy it can reproduce itself so when you triumph over hell prosperity starts shaking because it's the same government are we together your procession of saying i am healthy lets the spirit of poverty know that something is wrong i'm coming for you this year i prophesy to you in the name of jesus you will talk less and do more let me start by prophesying all this too much noise making and little result this year you will talk less and there will be mighty 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 results hallelujah you know when you watch people want to lift weight or fight wrestling they usually start with a lot of noise the other person will say look i've been waiting for us to meet and usually the stronger one just keeps quiet allowing the weaker one to rant and shout and all of that that noise is a strategy in warfare are we together now the noise is supposed to invoke fear that's why when terrorists want to bomb they will say we are coming to this city so they they create a a panic reaction are we together now that's why goliath was the only one shouting david didn't talk he only spoke once killed him and cut his head look let me tell you something eh? if you believe what i'm sharing tonight if you truly believe it your life will surprise you this year you know i think it was a jimmy i think it was you last year i was towards the end of last year i was telling him i said i've been sensing in my spirit that this year many people are going to break cycles you know there is a way a man is going through seasons you are laboring in the world but there's no manifestation yet but there is a way you step into a season you know that i've left this realm forever in every wise I kept telling him that i've been perceiving you know i was just joking it especially for our brothers i was telling him i said i said my people will be blessed this year i was telling him last year i said no this year people are going to push through things by the spirit so for me when the word came 
I, I jumped and I celebrated it first for myself and prayed it for the house. Triumphant processions. Triumphant processions. Triumphant processions. Are we together? When Jesus called Lazarus, he didn't come out in secret. He came out before everybody. That was a triumphant procession. Pastor Alpha said something very powerful. There is no triumph when there is no challenge standing before you. Are we together now? The idea of triumph already gives you the attitude of a warrior. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Which should already be descriptive of the character and the nature of the year. That the year will demand certain levels of warfare, certain levels of contentions. Forces of darkness you once were afraid of standing to confront. By an unveiling of strategies you now will be equipped to go and fight them. When Saul gave David his armory, David said, no, no, I'm not used to fighting with this. God did not train me with this weapon. I have my weapons. And the Bible says the weapons of our warfare, it says, they are not man-made. They are not fleshly. They are not carnal. But mighty through God, he says, for the pulling down of strongholds, casting down every imagination and every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of Christ. Then it says, bringing every thought to the obedience of Christ. Say amen. So this year, you will command victory after victory after victory after victory in the name of Jesus Christ. What is the basis of our confidence? You don't make boastful statements like this in the presence of situations and circumstances. I hope you know that the giants that stand before people are real. Understand this. Obstacles are real. Challenges are real. The economic turmoil that is lashing on people is real. Are we together? Poverty is real. Terrorism is real. Death is real. You see all these things plaguing the nations of the earth. So what would give a people such confidence to come out and boldly speak before the world at the beginning of a year that has been predicted using all kinds of indices that it's not a good year. Then you dare say it is your year of triumph. First John 5 verse 4. Let's look at two or three scriptures very quickly. What is the basis of our confidence? Why do we make all these boasts? When we have not even gone into the year physically. 1 John 5 verse 4. Media please help us. He said for whatsoever is born of God. Whatsoever is what? Born of God. Whatsoever is born of God. Not whosoever. Whatsoever is born born of God overcometh the world whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world and this is the victory that overcometh the world even our faith whatsoever so if I am born of God I qualify to make that boast that even in the midst of turmoil especially economic turmoil I can dare to say that I will thrive I will prosper and I will triumph whatsoever is born of God this is the first basis upon which we can make such an audacious claim everyone shout it say I am born of God I, born of God. I know it sounds simple but I like you to shout it I am born of God and so I overcome. Mm. To be born of God is a very serious thing. I know that religious people have made it look like... Um, I sat down here a few minutes before coming up. 
and i watched the way ejimi was taking care of his daughter the daughter would want to sit on his lap the daughter would want to run around and he would draw her when he was coming to celebrate january she's october but she was part of those who caught that cake because she was born of the celebrant are you together now and so while he's going for as long as she kept identifying herself as his daughter if another baby ran and came around ushers would hold her and say no no, no go back but because she was his daughter she had that access the birthday has nothing to do with her but she stood in front so the bible says whosoever is born of god must join him in everything whosoever is born of god overcome the world listen this is how to defeat darkness this world is a legal realm dominion is not is not jacking yourself you must stand upon keys demons listen they are obedient nobody breaks ranks the realm of the spirit is a legal system you overcome by presenting truths you don't overcome by wishing when satan came to jesus he said it is written and satan said i can't deny it both god and demons there is a rule of engagement the same way you fight war and even among terrorists they know that they are here to kill men when they see women and children they leave them they respect the rule of engagement there is a rule of engagement in the realm of the spirit whatsoever is born of god if my body is born of god it overcomes sickness if my finances are born of God, it must overcome recession. Are we together now? If I am born of God, I must be able to overcome every charm, every enchantment. I can't stop them from gathering. I don't even know whether or not they are gathering. But one thing I know is the Bible already gave me expo that the whole world lies in wickedness. So, so it is not unthinkable to imagine somebody is planning. Only God knows how many demons are planning plane crashes for me this year, car accident, maybe even after this service. I can join them in the discussion because it makes no difference to me. I am born of God. Believe me, I'm not making a boastful statement. I don't need to say, avoid that talk. Uh -uh. I'm, not, I'm not running away maybe because I don't want to hear bad news that's not what I'm saying I'm saying it, it makes no difference it's like a child saying I will beat you and then he's oh yeah beat me that's what you do with the devil the realm of the spirit has no confusion whatsoever it's a legal system you don't win by mistake and you don't lose by mistake everything is done through laws intentionally is God helping us tonight so the first basis of our confidence is that we are born of God everyone say I'm born of God what is the basis of our confidence John chapter 1 verse 5 we still have a problem there John chapter 1 verse 5 sorry about the um, I'm sure that may also affect those outside if so please we're sorry I'm sure they will be back as up John 1 verse 5 John chapter 1 verse 5 if you have it in your Bible please I'd like you to join me and read it John 1 verse 5 popular scripture ready read and the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not my Bible says overcame it not and the light this is the second basis listen listen please look up the second basis the platform upon which we can dare say it's a year of triumph is that we have been given an understanding from the word of god that darkness only remains darkness for as long as there is no light are we together now when you off this light this entire auditorium becomes dark but the moment the light comes on the darkness leaves so the departure of darkness is at the appearance of genuine light genuine light are we together now 
the second basis of our confidence is that all the works of satan are considered darkness and god and all he communicates is called light and the bible says the light shines the light shines the light shines so that god through his light is empowering us this year so that we can be able to walk through darkness so for you it does not matter whether it will light or dark because you are light yourself and you are carrying light so in case it were darkness as soon as you step in the rules change for you they have to change for you if i enter a dark room and i do not have light anything can happen i can match on a bottle i can injure myself confusion is that true but now somebody else who enter that dark room with his own light the room did not give him light but he forced the room to be illuminated through his light and he can organize himself are we together now so the bible says the light shines in darkness listen it is costly to live in today's world in ignorance costly to live in today's world in ignorance any kind of ignorance will not work well for us this year so the light shines in darkness. That is the basis of our victory. What should I expect this year? This year of triumph. What should I expect this year? Number one. Every, I'm being careful to say it, everyone who does not trust in the name of the Lord or everyone who does not live by the principles of the kingdom, this will be a terrible year for them. This is the truth. I'm trying to be as nice as I can sound, but this is, this is the mildest way of communicating it. Anyone who is not born of God, comma, and anyone who, though born of God, is not equipped with light, will not have a very funny year. That's the truth. Brothers and sisters, I will not lie to you. If you are waiting for government, now I love the government, we are responsible people as a ministry. The government of nations and policies to change so that you will smile. It means you will cry from January to December. Are we together now? We are tapping into the realities of another system to thrive and live. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? I like the way Living Faith puts it. They say my case is different. Very powerful statement. Not our case. My case. The rules are different for me. Are we together? We were, we were coming in from Uyo yesterday. We had a beautiful time. By the way, I'm sure there are people following us. Uyo is a lovely place. You want to see how heaven looks like, you can go to Uyo. Yeah, it truly really is a beautiful place. Hallelujah. We were rushing to come and catch the flight. And everything was over. They were about to lift. I mean, we were going to miss the flight. But because the person who invited us had influence with the airport authorities they caused the entire plane to be grounded until we came you see that i'm just giving you an example of how a man's case can be different the rules you read the rules and regulation you read on your manual is for the general public the same way listen on saturday there is no banking on sunday there is no banking but the doors of banks open every day it depends on who is talking there are men who if they want to withdraw now they open the bank and the manager comes he said i hope i'm not inconveniencing him inconveniencing me everyone shout my case is different shout it again my case is different listen this is the year every time you hear them say it can't be done just know they are speaking to the general public 
the Bible says you are a chosen generation a royal priesthood you, you have to believe this don't just laugh listen it's a mentality I have worked with for years I never generalize my life there is nothing general about me it's, it's not some boastful statement it's the truth I expect things to be different when I come it's my approach so I'm very interested in what people say cannot be done because I like to see how that thing will treat me oh hallelujah I pray that you have a victor's mindset this year all this generalizing ourselves oh that's how it happens no there are always exemptions there, there, have, there is no rule that has been applicable to everybody there are always exemptions are we together men engage secrets from genesis to revelation and change keys change rules kings who vowed that they could not see people saw certain women they did things listen 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 brothers and sisters everybody's explanation is his experience so people write books based on their experience they teach based on their experience they say in 40 years it has never happened that a young man within this and that age range becomes successful based on this gdp and a and b and c if you get a job today receiving forty thousand, by our estimate in 10 years you will now be able to build a house when you hear those talk honor them but turn and say no way uh, no 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 it's not me hallelujah yeah. believe me i live my life as if there is no such thing as recession i believe it by my solidarity to a nation at a corporate level but i absolutely do not be it's not it doesn't make sense koinonia is rising this year as if as if it's charm i all gave you to put in your pocket that's how we we'll rise no 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 that's what i saw god has made me a pastor over the ministry so i know what i saw i will sympathize with any other person who has seen differently but the bible says joshua and caleb were of another spirit 12 spies 12 spies went to spy a land perspective 10 of them saw the giants six fingers six toes they will shake themselves as if they are going to squeeze one another and the, the ten were seeing themselves in, in the midst of those hands being squeezed whereas Joshua and Caleb said my God look at abundance in this land they ran back and said the ten said we were like grasshoppers Joshua and Caleb said don't say we say I saw them he said let us go up at once for we are well able when Joshua was distributing and allocating land in the book of Joshua, Caleb came to him and said, when I was 40 years, Moses said, because of my courage, you will give me this land. Now give me this mountain. Although I am 40, about 45 years older, my strength is still there. I can take on those giants. Come on now. Everybody was looking at the end of the reign of Israel another man was looking at an opportunity for a tax-free life and a free wife are we together david came and said look i can't go through all this hustle what will be done for the person who kills goliath they say his family will be exempted from tax he will marry the king's daughter that's why when he was dancing before god and his wife turned he said i'm dancing before god who took the kingdom from your father and gave to me hallelujah thanks be to God who causes us always to triumph causes us always to triumph what do we expect this year a year of great victory and supernatural achievement write it down a year of great victory great victory and supernatural achievement don't go around insulting people 
but don't listen to all this nonsense you hear around believe me when i tell you this it's a year of great victory and supernatural achievements what do we expect this year uncommon results uncommon results in every area spiritually financially career-wise uncommon results what do we expect this year total dominion and mastery over the forces of darkness and the issues of life what do we expect this year i repeat total dominion and mastery over the forces of darkness and the issues of life there are real issues in life there are real forces but that we sustain an ability to command total dominion and mastery I wrote something down here that I want to read this was even during my retreat I said our goal as a ministry don't write just listen our goal as a ministry for 2017 is to lead God's people and as many others into greater levels of intimacy with God comma revival transformation signs and wonders prosperity kingdom influence and total dominion God's people will experience the dominion power of light over darkness that's what I wrote there the dominion power you see how cheap darkness is when you hold light when you do not hold light you don't make boast when you are driving and your headlamp offs you drive like a learner or park the car but as soon as you can see a mechanic who will buy a hundred or two hundred and fifty naira bulb and just put it just because a car that you bought four million or five million now has a headlamp of less than two thousand spoiled and that entire car becomes inefficient you bought a car over five million and the head the the, the bulb right that gives light that is less than ten thousand naira because that that headlight spoils you can't drive again you park your beautiful car and you can do nothing about it but just a young mechanic who comes buys that bulb from a shop your car can buy the shop but you carry the light and just fix it back and you can speed in the night as if it's the afternoon someone will run this year listen i got a powerful revelation about speed during my retreat and the lord told me if you see somebody driving on a speed lane slow he's either a learner or the car is not working well is that true so the concept of delay or slow movement is totally a function of darkness let me tell you something every driver knows when the road is clear there is no car and there is light what do you do there's no time for moving around and nonsense are wasting time you you hurry up that's how many of us the road will be clear light will clear off every devil standing that way hallelujah some of us it's not even you will even need to change the vehicle completely because what you have been moving with you you can't sit inside a wheelbarrow and you want to arrive lagos that's what the economy of the world is trying to give you their theories will make you successful when you are 70 years old listen you cannot live in today's world with the suggestions men are given and ever rise let me speak just economically speaking do you know in nigeria every family has at least two or three people now who are jobless they have been retrenched they've been downsized and they are waiting out of eight people one person got a job of forty thousand, and everybody saying praise the lord what does that mean to that salary as soon as you tight it finishes immediately so how do you build a house how do you buy a car how do you get married how do you sow into the work of god you see what satan wants to rob you so that you are 50 years and you are still staying in your parents house 
you are coming to koinonia but you are coming from their house at 50 and they look at you and say what is this but my case is different it truly is different hallelujah how will this be achieved we are going to pray seeing then that God has released the word his word is his bond his word is his commitment throughout this year I wrote something down you may just want to listen the primary tool that will be used to achieve this is the word of God but more specifically a thorough revelation of the secrets and the mysteries of the kingdom that are responsible for the desired results the primary tool that will be used to achieve this is the word of God comma but more specifically a thorough revelation of the secrets and mysteries of the kingdom that are responsible for the desired results so there is your desire versus the mystery that is responsible for actualizing it are we together please come help me with this bottle everyone please look at this my desire is to drink water i give one of these little ones this bottle they may be thirsty but they do not know how to open it this is the year you must match your desire with the corresponding mystery that was designed to open it up to you we have desires we know what we want but what it takes to deliver the result is where the problem is so the primary tool this year I tell you this year will be an unveiling of divine strategies the mysteries that are responsible for commanding results now I want to open this and I do not know and then somebody gives me an orientation you hold this and turn it anti-clockwise do you know I can hold this and turn it clockwise and it's not opening because that's not the law does the water hate me please answer me does the bottle know me it's a system whoever can turn it will drink the water so I use my frustration to say anytime you see this bottle run away it can't be open that's what they are preaching to you all around because people tried it and it did not work and then God tells you no take that same bottle and he tells you turn it and you turn it very easily very easily and it's open you are ready to take the water thanks be to God who through his mystery causes us always to triumph so everywhere they say it can be done God sends you there so the next time thank you the next time you see yourself standing in the midst of fire don't cry don't say it can't be done ask how can it be done how 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 not it can't be done how can it be done are we together God speaks to you and says by December you own your own house and you sit down and calculate and say God I'm earning 50,000 how much is is that go taste spent you see if you think like that not even this year your lifetime you will not build are we together you have to stretch your faith and believe God the word of God now let me tell you something what is God's part in this prophecy write it down this is the apex of this exhortation what is God's commitment Isaiah chapter 55 what is God's commitment in this prophecy if I'm doing business with you I have to know what my commitment is and what your commitment is right so this is what God says in Isaiah 55 verse 11 listen so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth it says it shall not return to me void but it shall accomplish that which I please 
and it shall prosper in the thing I sent it so God is telling you his own part that as far as I am concerned my integrity over this prophetic word that is your year of triumph is guaranteed my word will not return back I will not bring you at the beginning of the year and mock you God is too big to mock you he's too big to play with you play games with your mind no so shall my word be one more scripture because from the mouth of two or three witnesses a matter is established are we together Jeremiah 1 verse 12 Jeremiah 1 verse 12 amplified says for I am alert and active watching over my word to perform it so who is the performer who is the performer write it down that's his part the part of God is the performer the one who forces that word to come to pass he said it he said it to us as a family of faith that it is our year of triumph and so we have believed him his own part is to perform it make good his bond are we together now so what is your own part because usually this is where the equation fails I want you to pay attention take what I'm about to tell you as prophetic instructions eight instructions God gave me during our retreat eight instructions and he said if you keep this and tell my people to keep this it will truly be a year of trial so please take very seriously these eight instructions Bishop Oyedeko said Um, those who drive are taught by all kinds of people you call them coaches and drivers and, and all of that but those who fly planes those who train those who fly planes they call them instructors you fly a plane based on instructions there's no emotions to it it's exact you can time the landing of a plane with the fraction of a second are we together now i can't guarantee that if i ask you to drive from here to your house you may arrive in 10 minutes but when you are in the air i can time that you are landing 707 and 707 on the dot the tire is touching the ground because of instructions instructions give you accuracy 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 instructions do, doesn't leave discretion do this and this will happen don't do this and you will not suit this instruction number one what is my part what is my part in partnership with God to make this year a year of triumph second Chronicles 2020 that's instruction number one believe in the Lord and believe in his prophets write it down that's the first instruction believe in the Lord and believe in his prophets those who disregard prophetic instructions will hear it bad this year arrogant people who think when the word of god comes from a man of god it's a word they join all these these junk journalists that write nonsense about every man of god to mean when a man of god speaks he's just ranting no god has always used the instrumentality of vessels to speak his purposes to people believe in the Lord your God what does it do to you establishment believe in his prophets what does it do to you prosperity so the first instruction from God if we are to experience a year of triumph is that we must believe in the Lord by the way you are, if you are not born again here by the time I make the altar call please I want you to run because that's where it starts from believe in the Lord your God so shall ye be established then he said believe his prophets to believe his prophets doesn't mean to agree with them take them as true take what they are speaking as the word from God for as long as that word bears witness with your spirit the Holy Ghost confirming it then you take it and act upon it accordingly you're going to be receiving instructions here 
you're going to be receiving principles here be childlike be childlike and receive it and you will be surprised the kingdom is for children he said let the little children come to me right and do not forbid them for for such is the kingdom of heaven except you become like one of these little ones the bible says you cannot enter you can't experience the kingdom unnecessary big manism and pride is what will cause people to weep and languish believe in the lord your god so shall ye be established believe in his prophets so shall ye prosper so this is not the year to come for koinonia now that does not mean you should throw your brains away please let's balance it are you getting what i'm saying believing a man of god does not mean the person says remove one shoe put it on your head and walk around uh -uh. remember the holy ghost is in you are we together now the holy ghost is in you bearing witness with everything that is being spoken so i say to believe a man of god with respect to his walking with God Paul said follow me as I follow after Christ meaning if I am not following Christ don't follow me are you getting the idea now because many people have been indoctrinated wrongly with this issue of believing prophets they believe what you believe what they taught you about money and you are broke because what they said was a lie so don't just believe nonsense and say this is what I've said uh, believe provided the man has a track record of working with God. That's what qualifies him to be able to speak with you. So that somebody does not carry, I'm saying it for the sake of the thousands online. So that one pastor does not carry this and go and harass his members. And say even Apostle Joshua Selman said this. Now all of you go and bring 10, 10,000 naira and give me. The Bible says believe me. That's not what I'm saying. That's manipulation and witchcraft. Hallelujah. You follow a man of God as he follows after Christ. So you don't just follow him blindly. You check in front of him to see who he's following. If he's following another strange spirit, you turn around. Are we together? Instruction number two. This, this, this is the, my notebook for the retreat. I, I came with it directly so that I'll read it because it came with fire from the throne. And it's good to read it as it came. Number two, the second instruction, the second key, your own role is that you must cultivate a passion, a passion to thoroughly understand the principles of the kingdom. You must cultivate a passion for understanding, an appetite for understanding. Fight your areas of ignorance like a cancer this year. No assumptions no assumptions every gray area in your life deal with it ruthlessly i'm not getting this thing for five years i've been acting like i know it i sit down at the feet of the master and i learn how this thing works cultivate a passion for understanding the bible says they are life to those who find them to find them means you have to search for them and the bible tells us how proverbs 18 verse 1 it says through desire a man having separated himself that talks of focus 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 one leg here trying to read one book you read one page and then you come back after five months the year will end like it did last year and every other year you must give it your attention do you know the reason why many people never learn we are too distracted now please don't misunderstand me but i have to say this you have to be careful with the internet this year say amen. amen number two you have to be careful with your phone this year your phone may be the enemy that will stop you from triumphing you have to be careful some of these things that distract us be careful with unnecessary hilarious movies you are watching nigerian film you have 10 cds say i must finish it you set a goal to finish those films and then you are not doing anything with your life you must passionately pursue understanding it takes time it takes time you will need to study you will need to buy books you will need to listen to teachings again and again don't just say I listen to it again mm -mm. 
again and again there are some of my own teachings i've listened to one tape over 500 times believe me when i tell you this one just one koinonia teaching over 500 times god is my witness i'm not exaggerating there are other messages i've listened to one tape i will tell you almost more than a thousand times i'm not exaggerating you have to be passionate except you want to behave like a herbalist this year but if you want a predictable result be ready to spend time notice i didn't say in knowledge most of us are already aware you need understanding to know how to engage that principle is god helping us instruction number three let's hurry up what is your part number three you must be willing to be obedient and consistent write it down the third key god gave me for myself and for us two scriptures please deuteronomy 28 verse 1 and 2 and then james 1 25 deuteronomy 28 verse 1 and 2 and then james 1 25 the willingness to obey and to obey consistently you don't tithe in january and then the next time you come in october you don't get results that way you don't pray today and then sometime in may you just say let me go for prayer band meeting that's when you remember that you have not been praying you, there must be consistency deuteronomy 28 from verse 1 and 2 and it shall come to pass if thou shalt do what hearken diligently unto the voice of the lord to observe and to do all his commandments which i command thee this day listen when you observe and do them then the following will happen that the lord thy god will set thee on high above all the nations of the earth verse 2 and all these blessings so they are there but they will not come to you automatically shall come on thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken to the voice of the lord everybody say obedience say consistency yeah you don't do devotion today and then after two weeks you now kneel down and repent and just read two chapters and kneel down and repent again march you 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 change all these games this is the year you have to be serious please prophesy to yourself say i'll be serious even with the house of god there are people who are not serious you come for koinonia now and then you sit down later you say you are busy what are you busy doing you are busy suffering because nothing is working i must be consistent do you know no matter how little your efforts are if you are consistent you will get more results than somebody who comes up with an have you seen people who come up with elephant projects they just come out of one three-day fasting and say today i will read five books per week ten chapters per day i will pray three hours and while they are saying it someone is watching in two weeks you will say bros sorry oh i i remember you making that statement don't come up with elephant projects elephant projects is why people are not consistent like now most of you had retreat from december to now the fire is still hot so you are making statements that don't make sense god is saying calm down and say god just allow me or leave me run the way i want to run and you won't even reach february this year i must pay the school fees of 10 students god is saying be careful just start to say god leave me it's my heart now the third person is already asking you and you are saying please don't talk to me listen i want to show you why people are not consistent they are not consistent because they are, they are not they don't set goals that are reasonable i'm going to be saving 100 000 per month mm -mm. apostle has said we should save how much is your salary your salary is thirty thousand. how are you going to save hundred thousand? are you a thief you see it's not realistic i'm not saying don't plan but you, you have to take sensible steps it's like a Jewish child saying i must drive now that's an ambitious goal but it's not realistic 
so please go back and edit your plans to be reasonable and invite the holy spirit to help you this year i must be a millionaire in dollars respect money and plan well don't be a fool and do stupid things you know I, I'm, I'm saying this as a warning i'm speaking to so many people you have to be wise i'm showing you why number one we are not obedient because you'll be frustrated you will even tight again take your growth in sensible logical steps lord i will obey you i can dedicate one hour praying and i'll give my heart to it the day god grants me grace i will use that whole day to stretch don't say me and eight hours lord if i don't pray eight hours kill me that's what you said during your retreat you would have been dead from second of january because the only time you prayed eight hours was your retreat you have not even prayed one hour since that time don't make foolish statements emotionally are you getting my point now be careful lord if i miss coin only one day this year break my leg Dude, we say all kinds of things that don't make sense of course god is merciful so he just looks at us like a child talking to the father but you have to be wise that's why people cannot obey they yoke themselves with instructions that are too hard to obey at the moment i must give apostle a seed every every friday a jimmy a seed every friday my hatred a seed every friday lord that's my covenant with you be careful god didn't ask you You're, you are you will get there one day but your salary is five thousand how do you do that Praise the Lord. Are we together? So obedience and consistency. James chapter 1 verse 25. Please quickly. James 1 25. Let's hurry up. James 1 25. Look up please while I read. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty. The Bible says. And continueth. Continueth. Not just that he looked at it once. He continueth therein. He be not a forgetful hearer but a doer of the word what is his reward this man shall be blessed in his deed consistency will produce results consistency will produce results don't commit yourself to anything you know you cannot continue ask questions ask the holy spirit to help you number instruction number four you must maintain a robust prayer life write it down a robust prayer life a healthy fiery prayer life the bible says and the fire upon the altar it shall burn day and night listen this is a year when there are forces of darkness the arsenals of hell are out to eat and spew out anybody it can find there's no room for carelessness are we together now why do we need to pray to maintain our relationship and our contact with god why do we need to pray to maintain our discernment why do we need to pray to command things to be why do we need to pray to challenge the forces that be to keep way to give way you must pray there are there are wicked spirits you can only imagine how many devils of darkness plan to destabilize koinonia destabilize our lives to make sure that people don't come to misrepresent us you've got to pray listen let me tell you something if you're a pastor here let me teach you a very big secret I thank God for Koinonia. Koinonia has a robust prayer department. Many of you are part of it. And I thank God for the leaders, great guys, and so many people. This is a ministry of prayer. There are prayer giants here. But nobody's prayer for me can substitute for my personal prayer life. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There are many lazy pastors. I'm challenging us. There are many lazy church members. I know they will pray for me. Where are you going? Koinonia prayer band. Oh, please pray for us. Oh, you see, that attitude this year will not go well. Because there are instructions you must hear by yourself. Nobody can hear it for you. 
there are many lazy men of God who don't pray they say we have prayer warriors praying for me all around some of you even sow seeds to the men praying and say please this is just a small seed to buy orange juice while you pray it will not substitute your spiritual laziness history is full of men who did not pray and the fatal disaster that happened to them let me tell you anything that affects your prayer life has truly destroyed you not will destroy you if at this point you are listening to me your prayer altar is dead you don't need a word of knowledge you are under attack just know it not from God from hell you I don't care what the excuse is you don't you don't forget to eat you don't forget to bath you don't forget to dress you don't for there's nobody working for the government who says I forgot that I'm supposed to go to work today because every time you are tired you remember salary are we together now this prayerlessness and spiritual laziness and say I'm not you see, I'm not into all this I'm not the ministry type me I'm, I'm not the ministry type you must be the ministry type this year because victory is for ministry people if you are not in ministry this year forget about victory please take what I'm saying seriously say I receive grace say it inside and outside I receive grace to be on fire in the place of prayer you have to create times listen I know we are all busy don't get me wrong I'm a very busy person most there are many people here who are working some are students there are people all around if you are waiting until it's comfortable you will never be consistent you have to you understand your life come up with a program I'm a night person I'm like a dog in the night because my daytime is busy people will not even allow me to concentrate I can't tell you I'll pray effectively in the day so the night time when unbelief has reduced in the earth people are sleeping all the people who cause unbelief to fly like magnetic waves are sleeping that's when we settle things we 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 make things be that's my that's good for me there are others the nature of your job if you pray like that you will be sick so you won't say apostle is doing it and you do it like that there are others what you just need is to just make sufficient contact for the day and then one day that you have a leave maybe in a week you can use that day and just settle and catch up for the week are we together if you don't create a system you will not pray most of us here you can spare some time in the night except you are lazy you were praying in the night when you entered relationship that prayer time now became loan time be careful God is watching you have to you have to balance that thing and tell the brother say brother I love you but you see from this to this is a time for prayer we can readjust it but you can't just say ah, ah, yeah, well, even God knows that we're in love be careful demons don't know you are in love and that's where the issue is because these are the little things please don't just laugh listen carefully most of us our night times are for recreation which is okay those of us in relationships you are catching up time you know discussing which is wonderful i encourage it but but i encourage it only if your prayer life will not suffer if you are in love at the expense of your prayer life you are dying say amen, amen. number number five what is the third instruction from God to us totally the fifth instruction I'm sorry totally reject fear and negative reports let me dwell for a few minutes here this one came strong in my spirit the fifth instruction to see the outstretched arm of God this year you must totally reject fear slash negative reports media three scriptures please give it to us quickly Isaiah 8 verse 12 of course you know already that fear is a spirit don't turn there just write it 2nd Timothy 1 verse 7 says for God has not given us the spirit of fear 2nd Timothy 1 verse 7 for God has not given us the spirit of fear but the spirit of love power and what fear is a spirit you must challenge it do you know I'm not against 
watching CNN, BBC, and all the stations and reading the newspapers and all of that. But you have to be careful. Are we together now? Any report that violates your convictions, you can read it just for entertainment, but do not absorb it and add it to your convictions and start acting. Statistics have been released already that predict a lot of things. The economic health of nations predicts that this and that is happening. There's, there are already predictions that there's going to be almost a 10% job, uh, what they call it, downsizing. Thank you. By the time you hear that one now, you are, you are afraid because they just employed you. He says, say ye not a confederacy to all of them whom these people shall say a confederacy. Neither fear their fear. That means don't say what they are saying. They are saying recession. Don't join them to say recession. Don't fight them. Oh. Let me give you a balance. Don't go to the office and when they say there's recession, you stand up and say, look, in this board meeting, there is no recession. They will fire you. That's not what I mean. But I'm saying you don't accept that as a no it's not a prophetic word for you say i reject it there's no recession in my life say it again i reject it there's no recession in my life are we together the bible says neither fear their fears listen there are only about four or five fears that plague people number one the greatest is the fear of death number two is the fear of failure are we together now the fear of death the fear of failure really what else number three the fear of disappointment disappointment purposes disappointed and all kinds of things these are some of the fears that we have around our fears are finite you can look at them and know that i can conquer them the fear of death how am i sure now that you you watch on B, on bbc and, and cnn People are in a bus, a luxurious bus traveling. Someone sits down there. You hear about the foolish boy, that testimony that somebody gave where someone wanted to snuff a uh, uh, gun grenade. Look, this year you must behave well. Praise God. The things I used to snuff. yourself automatically you know that brother needs deliverance i hope you know nobody will go and bust grenade and then lose your hand is that a mistake that was calculated by hell a day before they concluded tomorrow by this time this guy has lost i'm sure it's even intercession that didn't blow the guy up maybe somebody prayed for him some problems are self-inflicted you smoke snuff and you are not in your mind and they arrest you they jail you no year of trial are we together now no year of trial is not caused by demons we have our wills are you hearing what i'm saying or they are snuffing and you are there you didn't snuff but you are still going to prison some of us are so careless you know that there are thieves around you your best friend is a thief your your other friend is a smoker the other person is is goes to a herbalist the other person is is a lazy man look at and you are the, you are serious you can't have a year of trial brothers and sisters let's not play games you have to be serious edit your association there are people you have to wave goodbye this year they say why say because it's my year of trial totally reject fear hebrews chapter 2 verse 5 verse 15 just write it these are scriptures since it's not projected hebrews 2 verse 15 and deliver them who through fear have all their lifetime been subject to bondage there is a correlation between fear and bondage every time you are afraid you are kept in bondage if you are afraid of death you will not travel to go and see your loved ones you are thinking what if i die have you not heard of people who were about to eat dinner in their house 
as they were just they just finished serving the meal a tractor a, a, a trailer just entered and killed all of them your confidence is not in refusing to get on the road your confidence is in the name of the Lord I shall not die but live and declare the Bible says right I said before you life and death blessing and cursing choose life I've chosen life that's why I don't smoke it's not just I chose life I cho I've chosen life that's why I don't drink hello I must say it you drink you have chosen death you smoke it's not and I don't care what it is e-cigarette um, 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 real one you are dying and another angle let me come in with another dimension Glutony is also on your way to death let me balance it are we together excessive food does something to your spirit man I'm not saying starve yourself don't get me wrong excessive food there is no champion I know who is a master at eating go and search history no champion I know you are temperate in all things balance yourself don't eat things that 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 cause trouble in your body many people have eaten their waste to their, their, to their grave they call it prosperity you buy two uh, 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 what they call it two whole chickens only you add malt add viju add yogurt add chips and you eat it and say look when I was poor I suffered now that I'm rich you are not enjoying choose life prophesy to yourself say I choose life I'm not saying no eat they serve you a chicken eat well but be temperate be temperate and do you know Ejimi the Lord shared with me a revelation during my retreat do you know why many people get sick from food because we are disobeying what the Bible says he who does not walk is an advice it's an advice it's not a warning I'm advising you if you don't plan to walk don't eat because eating without walking will do something to your health oh come on it's not we just think God is warning us it's an advice believe me brothers and sisters find out from people who don't walk and eat they don't stay healthy I'm not a doctor but ask the doctors among us here you are just eating because that life works based on the principle of give and take you are not giving anything and you are receiving if you don't walk don't eat the same way they say if you drink don't drive if you don't walk don't eat try this and see how healthy you will be most people eat but don't walk mentally they are not working spiritually they are not working physically they are not working you eat by 10 you wake up by 12 you know what you are doing you are dying great leaders are healthy people very healthy people because leadership makes you very diligent great leaders are healthy people alive and agile you see someone in his 30s mid 40s or 50s and you see him breaking down he wants to call you he's raising his hand as if he's sick food brought that kind of thing you have been eating and you have not been working do you know I, I studied this thing I'm telling you I took out time to study it a professional doctor a dietitian was talking about all of these things people walk and don't eat I mean they they, 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 they walk they eat and they don't walk say I walk and that revelation came from the fact that Jesus has done everything so we should not do everything that is true but you must understand in what context it doesn't mean you lazy around and move around no sir no sir no sir Jesus did not die to produce lazy people Jesus himself said I must walk the works of him that sent me you will never become great in life being lazy I'm talking about fear but I'm saying these are some of the things that sabotage our lives and keep us in fear. You are now afraid of your health. 
oh what if they say i am this do you know if you just obey the bible you don't need to fear death do you know why god created fasting even medically speaking medically speaking people who fast periodically are healthy your body needs to take a break from all these things you are just chunking in yeah. you buy a crate of minerals and finish it in three days no you fast if you have no spiritual reason to fast i tell you i don't mean fast like don't eat you can just take a day and say i'm just on food just to just to make my body feel healthy we have been trained to feel when you eat so much you are rich no 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 one will die here this year in the name of jesus christ and none of you will kill yourselves this year in the name of jesus christ let's hurry up we're almost there instruction number six the sixth instruction to experience a year of triumph is be patient but persistent write it down the year of triumph is for those who will be patient impatient people who hear it this year you must be patient hebrews 6 15 galatians 6 9 please quickly be patient it says everyone read want to read and so talking of abraham after he had patiently endured did what after he had patiently endured i know god has spoken that it's a year of trial but you don't wait and between this week and next week you just say i don't have a testimony that's it mm -mm, be patient over your finances be patient give god time to work things out for you give favor time to come to fruition in your life impatience will destroy many people so after he had patiently endured he obtained the promise galatians 6 verse 9 he says and let us not be weary don't gas out let us not be weary in well-doing why for in due season we shall reap what's the condition if we faint not so you must be persistent ask and keep asking seek and keep seeking knock and keep knocking and the door will open up to you i pray for you for grace to continue some of these things i'm sharing may not make sense now but brothers and sisters by the time you are in march and nothing has happened in your finances and you return back home and you find out there may not be food to eat then you go back to these things and you will see that i told you patience and persistence it doesn't mean the word of god is not working are we together by the time all of a sudden you find out that ah, uh -uh you're beginning to have abdominal pain and they now give you a report you don't like i say ah, uh -uh. but i thought god said it's my year of trial patience by the time you come for january miracle service and then nothing happens right away patience most people don't give god a chance to manifest himself in their lives we give up on god too easily the moment you say oh god this is what i'm trusting especially when you have dreams and you have experiences that show you that god is going to help you and then physically you are not seeing it that way god told you that you will get a job by december that's what you saw that's what you had and now it's january okay lord i give you the glory i thought it was december i don't know whether i got it right or whatever that's not important i just know you will give me a job you have spoken i hold on to your word very simple instead of saying god is it that I'm, I'm hearing voices or you are the ones all those things are signs of unbelief lord i believe you but i know whom i have believed and i am persuaded that he is able everybody say i still believe god prophesy to yourself i still believe god yeah the circumstances around you may not look like it but i still believe god two more and then we are done the seventh key you must have 
clear goals and expectations write it down the seventh key to experience a year of triumph you must have clear goals and expectations psalm 37 verse 4 and then proverbs 23 18 psalms 37 verse 4 you must have clear goals and expectations i'm taking out time to be this simple tonight because i want everyone to receive it so that we can pray this word i really desire from my heart and god knows i prayed for you during my retreat and i told god i said god please let your people get strange testimonies let this word work in their lives and god told me well the ball is in everyone's court god is more than faithful but if we engage with him then you can be sure that the sky is only a starting point it says delight thyself also in the lord and he shall give you what so when you do not have desires expressed as goals god is not authorized to bless you set clear goals are we together now financial goals reasonable financial goals set clear goals career goals okay i'm trusting god to get a job this year i'm trusting god to start a business this year my laundry should start this is the budget i need two hundred thousand. lord i lift it before you you are more than able to make this happen i set a clear goal i should have by god's grace i plan to have a cash flow of two hundred thousand per month this year hundred thousand per month this year that will cover the school fees of my children cover my rent for a year i set goals i set clear goals that by the grace of god every day i should be able to read a particular you know chapters of scripture i set clear goals when you don't set goals you will never achieve anything proverbs 23 verse 18 proverbs 23 verse 18 it says for surely there is an end and thine expectation shall not be cut off i have an expectation for the ministry i have an expectation for my life are we together you're a businessman have expectations you're a career person have expectation oh i'm due for promotion and i believe with all my heart that this year i will be promoted to become an operations manager lord i involve you in this thank you my goal is that by the end of this year i should have finished my msc i should have finished my phd my goal this year is at least i should be able to write three or four papers of international repute this year my goal this year is that i'll be a serious student i'm on three point maybe three point three five and my goal this year is to make five points first and second semester and to rise to a two one and then see how i can take it from there sensible goals my goal maritally speaking is to get married or to be a good wife my goal is to give birth don't just give birth set it as a goal so that you can gather the resources to manage the bible says no man intending to build a house you want to marry by june and you are wasting money in january you will not marry you set it as a goal goals give us focus are you getting what i'm saying now that way you don't waste resources there are many wasters in the body of christ wasting everything that god gives them you waste your brain you waste your resources no set goals my goal this year is to access the healing anointing god has called me into the healing ministry but i have not seen that level of healing that may be your goal and my goal this year is I want to focus on the healing ministry and trust God to access that grace so that I can become a blessing. My goal this year is to sharpen the prophetic dimension God gave me. I'm tired of talking to people and one out of every 20 is what comes to pass. I need to sharpen my accuracy. Goals. My goal this year, I'm tired of being broke at least even if i don't become a millionaire this year let me understand the laws of wealth and abundance my goal this year in preparation for marriage is to study on motherhood study on wifehood i want to be an award-winning woman my goal this year 
is not to be a foolish man i've been a foolish man for many years but now i want to calm down and understand what it means to be responsible my goal this year is to move out of my parents house and get a house of my own i want to start with a self-contained i want to be responsible this year that's a goal are we together my goal this year is to stop gossiping and making trouble and design a good life for myself i'm tired of talking about people going to people's homes to disturb them and be a nuisance to them i'm ready to be serious my goal this year is to be a greater person of integrity and character i found out that i love god but maybe i'm not quite a person of integrity and character i want to work on it do you have goals you must set them are we together I challenge you to set goals please set goals they will guide you in what to do and they will help you know the things you should not be involved in oh my goal is to start ministry this year okay this is what I'm seeing this is how God is helping me my goal is to expand this year my goal is to write a book this year my goal is to do this and that my goal is to be a more effective worker in koinonia i'm tired of absenteeism i'm tired of carelessness i want to give god my best today when you set goals you authorize god i have goals my life is littered with goals at every given point in my life there's no carelessness i know what to do after this night i know what to do tomorrow my week is already prepared my month is already prepared the year is already prepared i'm not sitting down wishing of course you will adjust the goals eventually but you have you must have a skeletal description so nobody just comes and says wow i want to come and waste your time have goals and finally the last point psalm 23 verse 5 you must walk conscious of the anointing oh yes oh yes triumph you can't rule out the anointing psalm 23 verse 5 walk conscious of the anointing it's projected thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies it says thou anointest my head with oil and my cup overflows there is a relationship between the oil on your head and the cup on your hands there is a relationship between the results you get on your life and the unction and the grace that is upon you hallelujah this is not the year to ignore the anointing i know that as a ministry we honor the place of the anointing and the ministry of the holy spirit but in a greater way listen there are some of us who we think the anointing is just for falling down and coughing out things no sir the anointing is god's ability it's his help in your life are we together now if you are trying to climb a staircase and then it's not working and i hold your hands i have assisted you the anointing is god's assistance in your life to multiply your results and in many cases to even produce it in the first way the anointing multiplies your result by a factor that you cannot even consider i expect the anointing to walk over my life this year i expect the anointing to walk in the ministry in every area expect the anointing to walk in your business expect the anointing to walk in your family don't sit down and expect life to be casual don't draw your graph arithmetically draw it spiritually hmm. in the realm of the spirit two plus two is not four it depends on what god adds to the equation two plus two can be one thousand god can complete the rest that's what his grace is all about so don't walk as if you are alone listen he said for with god with god with god without god many things are impossible but with god I told God during my retreat, I said, Lord, I want to walk with you like never before. I believe that if I walk with you, my life will be episodes of signs and wonders. Brothers and sisters, what you see us enjoy as a ministry, among many things, is the lavish benefit of the anointing of the Holy Spirit. When the anointing is upon your life, it's upon your life. 
you will command unending results unending results the things God has done in my life already from January till now are almost enough if he never does anything throughout this year again I'm grateful expect favor to work there is an anointing expect favor to work brothers and sisters expect the healing anointing to work in your life expect the mantle of honor to work in your life are you hearing what I'm saying now believe in the anointing many people ignore the anointing because we think it's not necessary don't get into that kind of business I believe in the anointing Acts chapter 10 verse 38 says how God anointed Jesus even Jesus had to be anointed to be effective how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth the crowds that come to this ministry the thousands that follow from all the nations of the world is the anointing how much publicity can you do is the anointing are we together the results and the testimonies the miracles the signs the wonders the influence the prosperity everything is the anointing you must make up your mind to embrace the anointing for every season there is a grace that goes with it you not only receive the prophetic word you receive the grace that makes it happen if I send you I have told you the message but I must give you the money you can have the message and not have the money you will still not do anything if I send you and I say go and buy me biscuit after I've told you what I want and you are ready to go but then I, I know how much biscuit is cost then I'll give it to you and sometimes I will give you more in case the price has increased hallelujah I don't know about you but brothers and sisters this is my year of triumph I believe it with all my heart God is not a joker I am not too proud to accept the word of God for my life triumph in every area I'm walking in extraordinary miracles I'm walking in extraordinary dimensions of wisdom extraordinary dimensions of grace I'm already prophesying to myself you can speak your own I'm walking in supernatural dimensions of health no sickness whatsoever I have no covenant with death no covenant with sickness it's a year my graph of progress is a straight line this year in the name of Jesus regardless of the challenges that come the wisdom to surmount them is already at work in my life I decree and declare that favor surrounds me like a shield extraordinary results by the Spirit the wisdom of God defying the strategies of men that's what I call the year that's what I call 2017 I call it a year of extreme favor from January to December favor follows me like a shield the Lord is a shield for me I'm prophesying over my year that's what I believe Lord you have declared that it's my year of triumph and I receive it I take you seriously my year of extraordinary breakthrough men are rising from everywhere to bless me this ministry is growing to new dimensions flourishing men of prayer men of fire men of revelation men of influence men of character men of godliness as a ministry there's massive salvation of souls this year extraordinary miracles by the hand of God diligent workers men and women who love the purposes of the kingdom and whatsoever Adam called it that was his name thereof no sorrow this year I exempt it from my life no sorrow this year I exempt it from my life no sorrow this year I exempt it the anointing goes before me the anointing goes into every month making every crooked path straight can you rise up and turn all this into a prayer name your 2017 name it come on everything that represents triumph for you I can't be falling sick this year no I reject sickness I reject living from hand to mouth by the wisdom and the favor of God I'm an extraordinary man of God are you praying I access deep dimensions of revelations deep dimensions of the anointing 
the miracle working power of God is lavishly at work in my life a greater dimension of his presence upon my life greater signs greater wonders greater testimonies I pray like never before I fast like never before I study the world like never before I rise to new levels of influence my light is shining Gentiles come to my light they are kings to the brightness of my rising favor all the way favor all the way favor all the way by the power of the Holy Ghost I'm a well watered garden in the name of Jesus. I refuse to fear the affair. Recession is far from my life. Recession is far from this ministry. In the name of Jesus, no death, no death, no death. The earth is obedient to my voice. No death. I rise above every enchantment. I rise above every witchcraft. I rise above every necromancy. The activity of the dark world. Immune to their causes. Immune to their spells. Prophesy. My year of triumph. Celebration all the way. This is a year that I serve God like never before. This is a year that I give to the kingdom like never before. I'm a kingdom financier. In the name of Jesus, the floodgates of heaven are open over me. This is a year of strange visions. Strange visions. Strange encounters with the Holy Ghost. Are you praying koinonia you are declaring over your year every department in this ministry is functioning at optimal level in the name of jesus we record groundbreaking testimonies of the hand of god koinonia is contributing in a major way to advancing the kingdom this year massive salvation of souls by equipping of the saints the sound of mourning and regret will never be had in my tent this year lift your voice and pray the sound of money the sound of regret financial woes family woes failure never part of my life this year please take it seriously you are creating your reality No tears of sorrow, no tears of sorrow, no tears of sorrow, no tears of sorrow. I stop it in advance. I stop it in advance. No tears of regret. I stop it in advance. No tears of sorrow. I stop it in advance. Oh, 
Alléluia. Prayer point number two. I must emerge victorious over every battle. I will not lose one battle this year. Lift your voice and pray. No, 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 no. Not a financial battle. Not a marital battle. Are you praying, Cornelia? Not an academic battle. Thanks be to God who causes me always, always to triumph. Are you praying? There shall be no losses. There shall be no losses. There shall be no losses. Thanks be to God who causes me always. Who causes me financially? Who causes me spiritually? Who causes me in ministry to triumph? Hallelujah. Listen, we are praying. Listen, times of triumph. Listen, times of triumph are also times when war must end. Because a victor must be there. Are we together? There are many of us who have been dragging with too many things. Today is as if you are the winner. Tomorrow is as if it defeated you. You are going to prophesy. This must be my year of completion. A victor must emerge over this issue. Lift your voice and pray. Supernatural completion. Over that sickness. I can't be healthy today. And sick tomorrow. My year of completion over that project. My year of completion over my family. My year of completion. The hand of Zerubbabel. The hand of Zerubbabel that begun this work. That same hand was completed. Is my year of completion. A year of completion by the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Listen. There are many of us, God started speaking to us, but you got part instruction, and the other part has refused to be downloaded, and so you are grounded. You are going to say, Lord, this is the year when your voice will be clear. I'm tired of confusion in my life. I must hear that voice saying, This is the way. Walk ye in it. Lift your voice and pray. Confusion. I'm tired of wondering whether I should take a job or not. I'm tired of wondering whether I should be in Zaria or not. I'm tired of wondering whether I should be in ministry or not. I'm tired of wondering whether I should marry or not. Whether I should be in business or not. Lord, let me hear your voice. And with it, let me hear the instructions for my next level. End confusion in my life. End confusion in my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are going to pray for the spirit of boldness. The Bible says the righteous is as bold as a lion. The challenges that many of us will see, let me tell you the truth. When you see it physically, it will look like a Goliath. But David ran to him and said, you come against me with your spears. Now is the time where you need to run to some challenges. Whether they are ready for battle or not, you say, no, I'm ready now. Finances, I'm ready now. Spiritual life, I'm ready now. Lift your voice and cry for an impartation of boldness. Boldness. No more fear. I will face it. No more fear. I will 
firm seat. No more fear. I will first start business and try it. No more fear. I will first this issue of joblessness and conquer it. No more fear. I will first my academics and conquer it. No more fear. Just my fears, I confront them. I no longer will run away from them. I face my fears. I face my fears. I face my fears. It's my year of triumph. Hallelujah. Fire is burning in this place. Two more prayer points. You are going to say, Lord, give me speed. I ask you for it. Give me speed. I don't want to move at the pace I moved last year. Lift your voice and pray. Give me speed. Speed in ministry. Speed in my spiritual life. Give me speed. The result of 10 years. Let me produce it this year. The result of 10 years. Let me produce it this year. Give me supernatural speed. 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 Hasten your word. Hasten your word. Hasten your word over my life. Hasten your word. Hasten your word. Hasten your word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One last prayer point. And then we are done this night. Hold on. Hallelujah. Listen. One last prayer point. The Bible says the light shines in darkness. The light shines in darkness. From January till December, everything you are going to be hearing on this pulpit will be an unveiling of divine strategies God instructed me this year he said let the people of God understand these mysteries my assignment to Koinonia this year is to open you up to the strategies that produce giants in this kingdom I will show you mysteries that if not oh, that God showed me I will not even teach it I told you there are personalized dealings of a man with God there are secrets that are for a man and his covenant with God alone that control great power God said don't hide anything from your people teach them the mysteries you have kept the mysteries that has produced results in your own life and that you have learned from people mysteries that are not obvious mysteries that are not taught in pastors conference mysteries that are not taught to the public you don't buy them in tapes the secrets behind the making of men you are going to pray and say father may my eyes see may my ears hear and may my spirit receive these divine strategies lift your voice and pray for every koinonia service lord i'm not ready to waste my time this year divine strategies the mystery behind the making of giants the mystery behind the making of stars the mystery behind men becoming systems of earth pray pray hallelujah 
Alleluia. Alleluia. I just, I just had something in my spirit and let me add it as a prayer point. And the Lord is saying that we should pray and ask him to roll away every shame this year. Listen. To roll away every shame. You can excel in one area, yet another area is not working. Naaman was a captain, but he was leprous. I'd like you to say, Lord, every shame, every, every, every shame, it must be rolled away this year. Take it from my life. Lift your voice and pray. I don't know what area you have seen shame, but brothers and sisters, cry to the God of heaven. Take the reproach away from my life. Take the reproach away from my life. Take the shame away from my life. That's what the Lord is saying we should ask Him. Take away the shame from our families. Take away the shame. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me prophesy over your life in the name of Jesus Christ. I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit that every prophetic word from God as revealed may it come to pass in your life this year in the name of Jesus Christ. I decree and declare that everything that hitherto has been a hindrance to the word of God performing in your life this year it is swallowed up by the message of God I decree and declare over your life hear me every legal access Satan has had to make sure prophecy does not come to pass on legal ground the blood speaks for you this year in the name of Jesus Christ Listen, one of my assignments this year is to make sure you prosper financially. You must criticize me, say whatever. I must make sure the people of God prosper this year. I pray for you in advance. The wisdom and the favor, these twin forces that have produced wonders in the financial realm, the mystery of wisdom and the mystery of favor, May it walk in your life this year. In the name of Jesus Christ. I decree and declare. You will not lose any single battle this year. You will not lose any single battle this year. I borrow the prophetic words. Of God's servant Bishop Oyedeko, and I prophesy to you that this year your case is different. I say it again: this year your case is different. Hallelujah! A level of result. Listen, I trust God with you that ten years track record of results, God will compress it and produce for you in this year. In the name of Jesus Christ. Some of you, before April, your goal for the whole year would have been achieved. Before April, believe me when I tell you, before April, your goal for the year would have been achieved. And I pray for you. The spirit that makes many of us start well but never finish well every year is like that you start you are excited by april you've cast out by december you have given up i pray for you from january i'm praying for you that every year will be a multiplication of grace and strength and vigor. the grace to follow up on your goals i release it upon you in jesus name finally i pray for you listen there is a role that the Holy Ghost plays in making men mighty. We honor him in this ministry, you know. I pray for you. The kind of alignment that must happen between you and the Holy Spirit. The kind of alignment, spiritual alignment that you must come into to be a career of divine power and divine results. 
receive grace for that alignment in the name of Jesus Christ lift your hands and bless the name of the Lord hallelujah now everyone stand please everyone stand there are people here this is our first meeting for the year and I told you the basis of exper experiencing a triumphant year listen is that you are born of God to be born of God means you have come to a personal knowledge of Jesus Christ what he has done for you I don't want to take for granted that there are people there are several people here and all the overflows outside and there are thousands of others listening online I believe that there are people here who are saying man of God I have been waiting for an opportunity to run to Jesus and what a good way to start there are others who are saying man of God I used to love the Lord oh I love the Lord but for some reason I rise today I fall tomorrow my life has gone haywire I can't even say I'm a Christian I don't want to start this year like this some of you may be visitors who came from far as I speak to you the Holy Ghost is telling you that man of God is talking about you wherever you are inside all the overflows I want you to quickly please we have just a, a minute or two for this make your way to the front right now God bless you don't wait for anyone to call you young and old Jesus is calling God bless you mommy God bless you keep clapping they are coming Lord I don't want to start this year the way I started last year I don't want to play games with my destiny if you are coming from outside please run you can open the doors just clear the way for them to come keep coming some of you are still seated and God is speaking to you you know you need to start the year well it's a year of triumph and triumph only starts with Jesus he's giving you a new beginning keep clapping koinonia it's a sacrifice you are encouraging them for those who are indicating their interest for the Lord Jesus Christ online right where you are you may not be able to walk forward but you can listen and participate in the prayer hallelujah keep coming we may start the prayer but keep coming hallelujah now thank you so much there are people here young and old listen I know that some of you are making a decision genuinely for the first time I know that others may have made a decision but you want to concretize your decision you are saying I'm tired of playing games with God it doesn't matter what category I want you to pray this prayer it's a supernatural prayer with all your heart lift your right hand and say after me Lord Jesus please don't pretend it you are not you are not reciting a poem Lord Jesus I love you and I believe in you I ask you to forgive my sins be my Lord and Savior I receive your life into my spirit and I declare that from today I'm a child of God I am born of God make my life Beautiful. make my life glorious make my life victorious father I pray for this once I'm praying for you now help them please help those under the anointing I stretch my hands towards you and I pray for you right now I declare your sins forgiven and I declare that the power of sin over your life is broken help them please those under the anointing I declare that you will experience a new dimension of grace with God I speak over you in the name of Jesus that the strength of darkness the strength of the flesh the strength of sickness the strength of sin is broken over your life in the name of Jesus from today I pronounce you victorious I declare it in the realm of the spirit you begin to walk in perpetual victory and I speak over your life that it is your year of triumph in the name of Jesus Christ amen and amen thank you for making this glorious decision it's the best decision now just an instruction before you leave
it is important for you to be planted in the house of God don't just make this an emotional decision if you don't stay within this area you must find a Bible believing church and be part of the workforce that way you are established in the house of the Lord praise the Lord if you stay within this area why not you are more than welcome now I want you to follow the lady waving her hands they'll have your details and um, we're going to communicate more personally to you in due course please make sure that you put all of the details that gentleman uh, on, on uh, the guy with the monkey jacket the Lord is taking away the reproach from your life and your family that's what the Lord is saying I should tell him I don't know you but in the name of Jesus the Lord says I should tell you no more it leaves your family forever you will return with outstanding testimonies in Jesus name the Lord bless you please follow the lady she's directing you God bless you let's appreciate them koinonia